Have you ever lost power during a storm and watched helplessly as your freezer full of food slowly turned into an expensive disaster? Well, imagine if I told you there's a culture that has been preserving massive quantities of meat for years at a time without using a single kilowatt of electricity. While we panic when our refrigerators break down, the Inuit people have transformed the Arctic's unforgiving climate into the world's most reliable natural preservation system, and their methods are absolutely revolutionary. We're talking about communities that process over 1,500 pounds of meat per family every single year, storing everything from massive whale portions to delicate seal cuts in conditions that would make our modern appliances weep with envy. When temperatures plummet to minus 84 degrees Fahrenheit, most of us would consider that a catastrophe, but the Inuit see it as the perfect opportunity to stock their natural pantries. These aren't primitive survival tactics either. They're sophisticated preservation sciences that have been refined over millennia. The first technique that completely changed my perspective on food storage involves something we typically associate with building snowmen and having snowball fights. But forget everything you think you know about snow, because the Inuit have engineered underground snow caves that function like premium walk-in freezers, except they never break down and never send you an electricity bill. The construction of these snow storage chambers is absolutely fascinating. They're not just random holes dug into hillsides, they're precisely calculated thermal environments that maintain consistent temperatures even when the outside weather is fluctuating wildly. The positioning has to be perfect, usually carved into slopes where snow naturally accumulates but doesn't completely block access routes. What amazes me is how they select the exact depth minus, typically extending about 20 feet underground, which is deeper than most basement wine cellars. The science behind these chambers is mind-blowing. Snow creates millions of microscopic air pockets that work exactly like high-tech insulation foam, but it's completely free and self-renewing every winter. These tiny air spaces trap heat and cold in ways that keep the internal temperature remarkably stable. While my expensive refrigerator cycles on and off constantly, fighting to maintain consistent temperatures, these snow caves just sit there maintaining perfect preservation conditions without any mechanical intervention whatsoever. But here's what really impressed me. These storage spaces can keep meat fresh for multiple years. We're not talking about a few weeks like modern refrigeration, but literally seasons upon seasons of perfect preservation. The dry Arctic air creates a natural barrier around stored meat that prevents moisture damage and bacterial growth. It's like having a vacuum-sealed environment created entirely by atmospheric conditions. Now if you think snow caves are impressive, wait until you learn about what lies beneath the surface of the Arctic landscape. Permafrost represents perhaps the most reliable preservation system on our planet, ground that has remained frozen solid for thousands of years, harder than concrete, and more dependable than any man-made appliance. The Inuit recognized this underground treasure trove long before modern scientists understood the geological principles involved. They excavate storage chambers at depths between 10 and 20 feet, hitting that sweet spot where the Earth maintains a constant temperature around 31 degrees Fahrenheit. These aren't temporary storage solutions either. Some family storage sites have been in continuous use for generations, passed down like valuable real estate. What fascinates me about permafrost storage is its complete self-sufficiency. There's no maintenance schedule, no defrosting cycles, no cleaning requirements, and absolutely no energy consumption. The only challenge is remembering exactly where you dug your storage chamber, because losing track of your underground pantry in the vast Arctic landscape would be like losing your car keys in a stadium parking lot, except the consequences are much more serious. Scientists have discovered that these permafrost chambers create temperature gradients that actually improve preservation conditions as you go deeper. Some communities have found prehistoric animal remains in perfect condition after thousands of years of natural storage. That's preservation technology that makes our modern freezers look like temporary solutions by comparison. But sometimes you need more controlled storage conditions, and that's where engineered ice cellars showcase the Inuit's sophisticated understanding of thermal dynamics and construction principles. These aren't simple holes in the ground, 
They're carefully designed underground facilities that combine ancient wisdom with impressive engineering skills. The construction process is remarkable. After excavating about 20 feet down, which puts you well below the frost line, builders create reinforced walls using whalebone supports. These massive bones, some weighing over a hundred pounds each, provide structural integrity that rivals modern building materials. They're naturally curved, incredibly durable, and completely resistant to decay in frozen conditions. Plus they represent the ultimate in resource recycling winties using structural elements from animals that also provided food. The ventilation systems in these ice cellars demonstrate sophisticated understanding of air circulation principles. Each facility includes multiple openings strategically positioned to maintain proper airflow without compromising temperature control. This prevents the stagnant air problems that plague modern freezers and eliminates those unpleasant odors that develop in sealed storage environments. Temperature control in these cellars is remarkably precise, maintaining steady conditions within just a degree or two of 32 degrees Fahrenheit year-round. That's more consistent than most modern refrigeration systems, and it's accomplished entirely through passive thermal management. The largest cellars can store up to 8,000 pounds of meat, enough to sustain entire communities through long winter seasons, but storage is just one part of the preservation equation. The Inuit also developed liquid preservation methods that create protective barriers around meat using rendered seal oil. This technique transforms ordinary blubber into a crystal clear preservation medium that bacteria simply cannot penetrate. The process of creating high quality seal oil requires incredible precision. The rendering temperature must be exactly right. Too hot and the oil becomes bitter and less effective, too cool and it won't achieve the proper consistency for preservation. Master oil makers can judge the temperature by subtle changes in sound and smell, skills developed over years of practice that no thermometer can replace. Properly rendered seal oil remains liquid, even at temperatures that would freeze most other liquids, staying workable until it reaches minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. When meat is completely submerged in this oil, it creates an anaerobic environment that prevents spoilage for up to two years. The oil doesn't just preserve the meat, it actually enhances the flavor over time, creating a slow aging process that improves texture and taste. The portability of seal oil preservation is another brilliant advantage. Unlike permanent storage chambers, Oil-preserved meat can travel with hunting parties in waterproof containers made from animal skins. This mobile preservation system allowed hunters to maintain fresh food supplies during extended expeditions, essentially carrying their refrigeration system with them. When liquid preservation isn't practical, the Inuit employ atmospheric preservation methods that harness the unique properties of Arctic weather conditions. The combination of frigid winds and intense sunlight creates a natural dehydration system that rivals any modern food processing equipment. Arctic winds contain almost no moisture, they're actually drier than desert air in many conditions. When these winds reach temperatures around minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit, they become incredibly efficient dehydrators, removing moisture from meat faster than bacterial growth can occur. It's like having an industrial food dryer powered entirely by weather patterns. The Inuit construct specialized drying racks called panaktut in locations chosen with scientific precision. These spots must catch optimal wind patterns while receiving maximum sunlight exposure. The site selection process considers topography, seasonal weather patterns, and airflow dynamics with an accuracy that would impress modern meteorologists. The drying process is remarkably fast and efficient. Meat can lose up to 80% of its moisture content within 48 hours, transforming from fresh cuts into concentrated nutrition that can last for years. Large community drying operations can process over a thousand pounds of meat simultaneously, creating massive stockpiles of preserved food in just a few days. The Arctic sun plays a crucial role in this preservation method, though not in obvious ways. The constant daylight during summer months, combined with the reflective properties of snow and ice, creates intense UV exposure that helps eliminate surface bacteria, while the cold air prevents new contamination. 
It's like having a natural sanitization and preservation system working simultaneously. For even more complex preservation needs, the Inuit developed smoking techniques adapted specifically for Arctic conditions. Traditional smoking in temperate climates relies on readily available wood, but in the Arctic, fuel sources require creativity and careful resource management. Arctic smoking utilizes combinations of dried seaweed, whale oil and precious driftwood, with each community developing signature fuel blends passed down through generations. These smoking mixtures burn at carefully controlled temperatures, typically maintained between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, creating cold smoke that penetrates meat completely without cooking it. The smoking structures themselves are engineering marvels portable enclosures made from animal hides that trap smoke while maintaining precise ventilation. Too much airflow and you lose smoke concentration, too little and you risk overheating or creating too much moisture. The balance requires constant monitoring and adjustment based on weather conditions and fuel characteristics. The timing of Arctic smoking is absolutely critical. The process typically requires 48 to 72 hours of continuous smoking, during which the meat must be monitored constantly. Experienced smokers can determine doneness by tapping the meat and listening to the sound it makes meat, different tones indicate different moisture levels and preservation stages. What's remarkable about this smoking method is how it concentrates nutrients while preserving them. The final product contains significantly higher protein density than fresh meat, with some pieces containing the equivalent nutrition of several pounds of unprocessed meat. It's like creating natural protein concentrates using nothing but smoke and patience. Perhaps the most fascinating preservation method involves controlled fermentation processes that create environments where beneficial bacteria transform meat into highly nutritious long-lasting food products. This isn't random spoilage, it's carefully managed bacterial cultivation that requires deep understanding of microbiology principles. The fermentation chambers are excavated to maintain constant temperatures around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, creating ideal conditions for specific bacterial cultures. These chambers maintain more consistent temperatures than most modern refrigeration systems, and they do it without any electrical input whatsoever. The fermentation process creates natural antifreeze compounds that prevent the meat from freezing solid even in sub-zero temperatures. The beneficial bacteria produce substances that not only preserve the meat, but actually enhance its nutritional value. Traditional fermented meat contains dramatically higher levels of essential vitamins, particularly vitamin C and B12, than fresh meat. Some fermentation cultures have been maintained by families for over a century, passed down like precious heirlooms from generation to generation. These bacterial cultures have adapted so perfectly to Arctic conditions that modern scientists are studying them to understand how life might survive in extreme environments on other planets. The fermented products can last up to two years without any additional preservation, and they provide concentrated nutrition that help prevent vitamin deficiency diseases in communities with limited access to fresh plant foods. It's like having a natural vitamin factory that operates using nothing but carefully managed bacterial processes. What truly amazes me about all these preservation methods is how they work together as an integrated system. The Inuit didn't just develop random techniques, they created a comprehensive food security network that could handle any situation the Arctic environment might present. Snow caves for bulk storage, permafrost chambers for long-term reserves, ice cellars for organized inventory, oil preservation for portable nutrition, wind drying for concentrated rations, smoking for enhanced flavors, and fermentation for vitamin-rich supplements. Each method complements the others, providing redundancy and flexibility that ensures food security regardless of seasonal changes, weather conditions or unexpected challenges. While modern society relies on complex supply chains and energy-intensive preservation systems that can fail during emergencies, the Inuit developed sustainable methods that actually improve during harsh conditions. These techniques represent thousands of years of accumulated knowledge, refined through generations of experimentation, and passed down through oral traditions that preserved not just the methods, but the understanding of why they work.
It's applied science at its finest practical solutions, developed through careful observation and continuous improvement. What strikes me most is how these preservation methods demonstrate that sophisticated technology doesn't always require sophisticated machinery. Sometimes the most elegant solutions come from understanding natural processes so thoroughly that you can harness them with simple tools and careful technique. The Inuit proved that human ingenuity, combined with deep respect for natural systems, can create preservation methods that outperform modern alternatives while using zero external energy. These preservation techniques offer valuable lessons for our modern world, especially as we face challenges related to energy consumption, food security, and sustainable living. While we might not all be moving to the Arctic anytime soon, the principles behind these methods, working with natural processes rather than against them, developing redundant systems for security, and creating solutions that improve rather than degrade over time, are relevant regardless of where we live. The next time your power goes out and you're worried about your freezer, remember that there are communities who have never worried about power outages because they never needed power in the first place. They built their food security on understanding ingenuity and respect for natural systems resources that never run out and never send monthly bills.